Hi there. Behind the scenes at the Cincinnati Zoo, every day there's all sorts of training that goes on. And a lot of it is not the kind of training you might think of where the birds fly back and forth or the cheetahs run, but instead for health care and animal husbandry to make sure that the animals stay as healthy as they can. And some of this is just remarkable. We have keepers, literally, like a farrier would on a horse, trimming the hooves on a giraffe. Now you might say, well, okay, the giraffe's getting a treat and knows how to do it. Giraffe are extremely nervous animals, so this didn't happen overnight. We're here with Teresa, who's really sort of led this charge. It had to take a lot to pull this off. Yeah, it's taken a long time, about three or four years of consistent training with Tessa to get them to get her to do this behavior. So Tessa's 14 years old. She's a mom. She's had a lot of babies here. She's terrific. Yep, she's a great animal. But why do you need to work on their feet? Um, in, in zoos, they just don't walk as much as they do in the wild. Mm -hmm. So uh, they get a lot of overgrowth and that causes pressure points and it could um, end up in uh, broken bones or ligaments and things, causing lots of issues with their feet and pain. So we want our animals to be as comfortable and active as possible so that they can continue to do their job and be ambassadors for their species. So we want her to be healthy and happy. So to keep them that way, we need to take care of their feet. So over four years, you had to start, I guess, just by getting her comfortable to come over, or how do you do it? Yeah, so uh, the first step is uh, learning how to target. So we use this um, target stick. It has a little stick with a buoy on it. So uh -huh. they learn to touch their face to that, and then they follow that so we can move them around the stall. Like they yeah. just learn how yeah. to move to the target. And then we have them in this setup so we get them used to mm -hmm. like coming or uh, approaching the straps with the target and um, and then we put a block in front of them and then they'll kick the block a little bit. Mm -hmm. We reward them for kicking the block and yeah. eventually uh, we can shape that behavior to like putting their foot on the block, um, curling their foot on the block as she's doing yeah. right now um, and then touching them. Touching them is usually the hardest part because they, they're really um, yeah. funny about being touched. Sure. Um, but once once we can touch their feet, like we're okay. they're doing really well. It took us a long time to get to oh. to touching them. And it's all I think encouraged by food rewards. Yes, they yeah. are very food motivated. They love. We use uh, crackers for okay. training. Um, it's the only time they get it. It's a very uh, high value item for them. So yeah. they really love their crackers and they're willing to work for it. So. Well, it sounds like folks that are looking at home who think, well, I tried to train my dog to do something. They need to be more patient because yeah. doing this, the steps you talked about, I know took a long, long yeah, time. Yeah, it was several years of just being consistent yeah. with them and, and, and being patient, being yeah. very patient. <laughs> well, and clearly she's comfortable with it because here we are, I'm a stranger and I'm right here and she says, no, I know what we're going. Yeah. And I love this rig you've made where you open the door and there's a, she can lean in and she's got something to put her foot on. Man, I love it. So it doesn't hurt her. No, um, it's kind of like your fingernail, yeah. like just trimming your fingernail. So she can yeah. feel the vibrations, but she can't really, it's not very sensitive. It's yeah. not going to hurt her. I love the fact that the other giraffes are right here, and I guess they're going to uh, do this and learn to do this themselves. Yeah, well, actually all five of our giraffes know how to do this. Um, some of them are better than others or yeah. more comfortable than others. Tessa is our most comfortable around a bunch of people. So, um, but they all five do this. Um, where uh, the, the two young boys are in progress of learning. They they do one foot uh, right now, but they'll learn how to do all four yeah. feet eventually. Tessa here does all four of her feet, or she'll let us trim all four of her feet. I know our primates are trained where they can give them a shot mm -hmm. or take blood. Do they do that kind of thing with an animal like a giraffe? Yeah, we actually do. Uh, Tessa and Cece are both trained for voluntary blood draws. We're working on um, the three others, but but we have actually gotten blood on her about six months ago, and we're gonna continue to do that probably about yearly just to keep keep an eye and yeah. check on everything with her. That is mind boggling, because I know when I go to give blood, I'm a nervous wreck and I know what's going on. So the thought of getting an animal to be calm enough over time, and I assume you do it just like this, starting slowly mm -hmm. a little at a time. Yep, it starts slowly, They just learning to, Touch, we do we draw blood from their neck so uh -huh. we have to just get them used to touching their neck and then um, get other objects coming towards them like yeah. a tube with a needle um, on touching them with like a cat needle and yeah. then we use a blunt needle that's had the the sharp end yeah. cut off but they they get that sensation and once they're comfortable with that and stand still then yeah. we can go for a real needle gosh well that's neat and we're glad that they've got got healthy feet because certainly for hooked animals whether it's elephants or giraffe 
having healthy feet is what keeps them healthy. So right, yes. Thanks for everything you do, and thanks for doing this. I'm fascinated by this.